so you're a grown ass man you got a business it might be stuck and you want it to grow and you keep telling yourself a story that maybe it's not meant for you to have what some of these other guys have because you've tried and you've tried and you've tried and it's driven you into exhaustion and into even depression and now you feel like you're not good enough for your wife, your kids the people that actually love you and it's eating you alive and you're having negative thoughts that you shouldn't be having well <laughs> And, and you're exhausted from trying to fight those thoughts. And you can see it in your face and in your eyes. And you're keeping it all a secret. Because you're supposed to be a strong man. And frankly it's true that the world that we live in. If you start telling people that. They don't care. It's a sob story. And you know that. So you keep it all inside. And there's a saying. Most men die at 25. Sadly, they wait until 75 to be buried. And most people die with their dreams still in them. They die with their music still in them. So you have big dreams and you set out to achieve them. And <laughs> three, four, five years of that shit and you're not seeing it happen. And the story that you keep telling yourself over and over and over in your head is solidified. It's biology. It's become a belief that is so strong that it's become your reality. But you say, I have all the proof to back up why my story is real. I can't get the customers to pay more to afford me to do X, Y, Z. This ain't going to happen in my area. Or you don't understand the problem that I'm going through. I have uh, a family member who something is going on, right? Like, bro, we all have it. The most successful people I know have gone through the most effed up stuff and continue to go through it. And somehow they pierce, per persevere. They persevere through it. I've never said those words together in that particular order. They persevere through it. So, that made me just think, I said the word peer. They peer through the successful people and they can look through the other side. You know that the tunnel, the tunnel, and it's black, but you can see the light on the other end, but it's squeezed all the way down to a dot. <laughs> How am I ever going to get there? Well, the old saying is true. The definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. I remember having my hand on the steering wheel of my truck again. It's another fall. It's freezing. I'm leaving the dump. The dump site to dump all this debris. And, you know, things have changed. They're okay, but it ain't nowhere near enough. Like, and people talk about good money. No, 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 I need 200 times the money to make this work. Like, boom, 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 boom. Like, not, and then when you think like that, people say, oh, all you care about is money. The only other people, the only people I've ever heard talk like that are broke because that's the excuse that they're saying this is what I want to warn you about in this video right now because this is a warning and you better heed this warning and listen to me closely brother when you want success so bad nah I'm not saying what you think I'm gonna say listen to me I'm this is like nothing you ain't heard before people don't talk about this much hun the internet when you want success so bad you first have to be relentless and say I'll never give up I'll never throw in the towel 
I'll never violate my integrity. When William Wallace in, in the movie Braveheart at the end, one last word to bow to the king, which was not his king. One last word, this is your last chance. And he screamed what? He screamed, Frida! They cut his head off. Do you understand what that meant? That was deep. You have the power to demand toxicity out of your life. I think Brennan Bouchard said that. And you have the power to love toxic people, but not tolerate any of their bull crap. And you have the power to demand demons out of your life. And if you don't, you call on the most high authority in his name. Get them out now. And if you have a, a healthy, righteous anger towards success, Tony Robbins talks about this. He says some people like if they want to go on a diet, but they can't eat, stop eating junk food. If you do something radical, stomp around the house and open all the cabinets and get grab all the junk food, like a ritual, and stand over the garbage can as you throw all the the. Uh, the junk food into the garbage can and you go I am done eating this junk food and you're but you're serious like you're stirring up emotion because if you read the book power versus force by dr. David R Hawkins he talks about these different calibrations and you can measure this stuff apathy is the lowest it's lower than shame joy and peace and love and light Peace and love are the highest vibration. And I spoke about this. I was the keynote speaker at the 2021 International Window Cleaning Association in Orlando, Florida. And I posted this online and a couple of people commented, like I was talking about that on stage, but I posted it on the internet. People were like, what's this guy talking about? Nobody cares about this stuff. All people want to hear about is Bentleys and booze, right? It's like, no, so this is real. I'm talking about your thoughts, your feelings, they're creating harmonic vibrations in your body. Masuru Emoto wrote a book called The Power of Water. You know about this stuff, come on, you know. Your body is, what is it, 90% water? So whatever thoughts and feelings and things you're saying and speaking is all vibrating in your body and it's manifesting. So you are co-creating your own reality. Just getting nippy out here. I'm about to buy a brand new camera that has amazing um, image stabilization, so this footage will not be shaky. I'm, no, I'm not going to tolerate this shaky footage anymore. This is like a nice Sony ZV-1 with a light, and it's, it's too shaky. I'm going to buy that, actually, right after this video. So, what I was talking about is a healthy, righteous anger. So if apathy and shame are really low and you're trapped there, listen to me clearly. This is the answer. Apathy and shame are low vibrations and you get stuck down there. You can't muster up enough energy to break through. Consciously break through to unlock the subconscious so you can wake up from the spell that'll get you into the next level. Albert Einstein said you cannot solve a problem with the same level of thinking you were at when you created the problem. You must rise to a new level, but you can't if you're stuck in fear, apathy, and shame. So how do you break through? Well, it might be psychological, it might be thoughts, it might be therapy. You might have to get a literal uh, deliverance, a demonic deliverance. I believe in this stuff. You might have generational curses. You might have something trapping you that ain't even your fault. You gotta get to the bottom of it. And you're terrified to get to the bottom of it. How are you gonna grow your business and get to the next step? And how are you gonna handle all this money that you say that you want if you ain't got rid of the demons in your life first? Get real close to your family. Here's the last thing I'm gonna say. You don't got the right to throw in the towel. You haven't earned it.
I challenge you. You think I'm playing? I challenge you. Don't look at me. I challenge you to go look in the mirror. Fall in love with your woman all over again. Fall in love with yourself all over again. You only got pets. Fall in love with your pets again. Your children, your family, your God, your business, your clients. Get out of apathy. Get out of shame. Don't tolerate it from yourself anymore. Take a stand. I know it's hard. But you don't understand. I don't want to invalidate you. When I was a little kid, I used to walk up the steps and down, lay on the steps when I was a kid at my grandma's house. And there was this poem called Footprints in the Sand. It was like, but it said, but, but Jesus, where were you when I was going through all these pains in my life? And at the end of the poem, it basically says it was then that I carried you. Because there was always two footprints in the sand, two pairs, two sets of footprints in the sand. But at the end of the poem, he's like, every time I went through hell, there I looked down and there was only one set of footprints in the sand. Where were you? And he said, it was then that I carried you. You have, you have grace in your life. You know how much of a miracle it is to wake up every day in your shoes and have what you have and to experience the love that you experience? You are blessed. It's gonna be okay. You're going to be okay. It's gonna be okay, okay? You got this, foo. You got this, foo. You got this, man. Come on. You got this, homie. I know you lost your best friend to drugs or alcohol. That ain't you. You can cry that shit out. I know that your fucking dad walked out on you and he wasn't there where, the way uh, there the way that you needed him. I know that you've been cheated on, stabbed in the back. Shit, you might have stabbed some people in the back because you were so desperate and needy at the time. It was all you knew how to do. So you stuck the cookie in your mouth and now you're ashamed about it. Go back and apologize to those people. Go fix it and make it right. Heal your soul. My friend Sean G, he talks about stigmatism in my soul. <laughs> you got this, man. Let's go. Get up. Let's get it. Come on. Let's go. You got this. Let's go.